What are some of the things that uh, the safety professional and the employer should do immediately in order to show good faith and to um, start working towards this will never happen again? So an employer's number one responsibility is the protection of its workers. You agree with that? 100%, 100%. Not only from a moral standpoint, but also from a legal standpoint. Now, let me deal with the moral aspect to begin with. If you are not investigating to prevent reoccurrence, and you're not communicating what you're doing to prevent reoccurrence, then what you're doing is destroying your occupational safety and health program. You're creating a barrier to a safe work environment from a psychological safety standpoint, and you're setting yourself up for a confrontation with OSHA. Okay. Now, the reason I say that is there are many companies, as soon as something bad happens, serious injury or fatality, they want to wall in. They, they close ranks in the management team. They, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to use hide information because that may not be, that may be too strong a word. How about control the information that comes in and out to the extent that it hampers discovering what happened, why it happened, and putting a countermeasure in place. So we won't, we don't want to do that, right? Right. Our job as safety professionals and uh, the job of legal counsel are two different things. In our previous episodes, we talked a lot, a lot about law theory and some case law and uh, protecting the organization, and I still believe in all that. But lawyers need to do lawyer stuff and safety professionals need to do safety professional stuff. And understanding where that barrier is, understanding where that line is, is very, very delicate. My responsibility is to help protect the workforce. So we need a good investigation that then leads to a good mitigation plan. Now, I'm going to just say stuff that everybody else says, but I want you to think about it and to really mean it if you're listening to my words. If your investigation ends with blaming the worker, and we're going to blame the worker as a defense, then there are elements that you have to meet. If we're going to tell the, the, the OSHA that Jimmy got injured because it's Jimmy's fault, Jimmy did something stupid, then you have these elements to meet. And most of us can't meet them. That means we've trained Jimmy, we've instructed Jimmy, we've gone out there to make sure he did it right. We have a progressive disciplinary program in place, all those things, and most of us can't prove all that. Mm -hmm. So the employee bad act affirmative defense, not only is it contrary to the new view of safety, it's also contrary to what your actual defense is gonna be. It's much better, in my opinion, to own up to your mistakes, right? Where you've had a violation, we've had a violation. Understand internally what's happened. Then create a mitigation plan so it never happens again that moves beyond just saying, we're gonna retrain these workers. Right away, do it right away. You have to do it immediately. Now, when OSHA comes out and they do their inspection and their investigation, it may be six months before they have the closing conference or, or you may have the closing conference before that, but it may be six months before your notification of citation and penalties uh, proposed shows up in the mail then you got 15 days if you wait to then particularly in serious injury and fatality investigations you're not going to get a mitigation plan implemented and, and all that in 15 days so go ahead and do it and make a safe make it a safer workplace document what you do 
So if training is part of your mitigation plan, you need to document that. If you are installing different controls, you need to document that stuff. And then when you have uh, the meeting with the informal conference with the area director, he can use that to help mitigate some of the potential penalties. You can negotiate at that level. So I'll give you an example. In a, in a recent case uh, involving a fatality, we were looking at potentially uh, several hundred thousand dollars in, in potential penalties. We knew that right off the bat. Because as a safety professional, I've done a good investigation. I know what went wrong. I know what the standard says. And every time there's a standard and we violate it, guess what? We can get penalized for it. Yep. So I already had a good estimate of what we might get. And I was pretty accurate within one citation of what, what ended up. From that, we developed a mitigation plan immediately and had the mitigation plan, not only the plan, it implemented done and part of our everyday process before we had the informal conference. And that reduced, you know, potential penalties from several hundred thousand dollars down to about uh, two serious, two non-serious and $16,000 worth of penalties. And that that's what I'm talking about. So your mitigation plan needs to be deep, it needs to address the real issues and it needs to be implemented before you have that informal conference if if possible if not you better have a good reason why you haven't done it